Sports time now when we head over to the sports studio where Amory Burke is standing by with the details. Amory, what do you have for us tonight? Well, good evening, Lisa. I start with the news that Polo has been dealt a very hard financial blow by the COVID-19 experience. That's the word from Sir Charles Williams, who owns the Polo facility at Apesil. Speaking to sports journalist Andy Thornhill, Sir Charles estimated the fallout to reach the hundreds of thousands of dollars. A knockout blow. Not hope blow. We were at the peak of our season. We were just, we were on the verge of starting four weeks at Waterhall at Epson, where we had to cut and set all the horses out the paddock, rooms home, and shut down. In private, foreign exchange, it was a good tourist attraction. We were looking for a good, good year. A team from New Zealand, a team from England, a team from America. All that council. On average, how much do you estimate um, Polo brings in in terms of foreign exchange annually? Just to give us an idea how much we may have lost. Hundreds of thousands. And what of the fate of those who were laid off and so on? Are they still getting some kind of support from those who employ Yes, of course. Of course. Now, Barbados' first competitive winter free skier, Victor White, is calling it a day on the sport in which he created history by being the first to fly the broken trident on many snowy slopes. The Sweden-born White, whose father is Barbadian, has been competing for the island since 2016, but an onslaught of injuries has caused him to hang up his skis. He spoke to me about his decision. It's a harsh decision no athlete ever wants to make, retiring prematurely from a sport they love. But for Barbadian winter skier Victor White, it was a decision taken as a matter of life or death. Speaking to me from his home in Sweden, White said while it was a tough decision, it was one that he has taken in stride. Within the sport, I've broken my left leg, I've, I've torn my ACL, I've, uh, I've broken my rib and my collarbone and thumb. So injuries is something that I'm very familiar with and I usually work through them to get back stronger. However, with the head and these severe concussions that I've had, and when the doctors actually told me that if you hit your head again, you might, you might end up in a coma or even die, um, I felt that first, first I didn't acknowledge what they said and I tried to push on anyways. However, when I, when I actually realized that my head is really fragile, that's when I had to, had to make the decision. So it's not a decision that I wanted to make myself, but yeah, sometimes when you do extreme sports, that, that's the price you have to pay. Now, White made history as the island's first way to skier when he hit the slopes of Sydney, Australia back in 2016. And on his first outing, claimed gold in the treadball slope style event. His aim was to represent the island at the Winter Olympics, but this never came to fruition after a failed attempt to qualify for the 2018 Games. But he did have many successes along the way, and looking back on his professional career, his last season was the most memorable, especially the silver medal claimed in Poland at the 2019 Europa Cup. That was something that I'll remember for life, and as well as the World Ski Championships last year as well, finishing... 31st, that was, uh, it was a big accomplishment for me. And as a 22-year-old has hung up his skis and taken to the books to pursue a degree in management, looking back at representing Barbados, the birth country of his father, he would do it all over again. I, I always said this internationally competing uh, when I was speaking to press. There, there are no other athlete on, on the skiing tour that has had the support that I've had from you guys. And that has uh, carried me through tough times where I've had to, to struggle with injuries, etc. as well as having that support and all the nice messages. So I'm, I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart to everyone that's been following me, talking to me, sending me messages. Um, yeah, so thank you. So don't forget this name, Victor White, Barbados' first winter free skier, a short but definitely history-making career. Horse racing continues to be held, albeit without spectators, at the Gulfstream and Oakland tracks in the United States. However, top local jockey Jalon Samuel says in the wake of the global coronavirus pandemic, his main concern is to stay safe. 
I will not go and take the high risk of my health to um, proceed my career in this in this pandemic time. And now I can sit out and I can wait. I don't mind. I don't mind at all sitting out and waiting till this fly over. You know, if you want it over, with, you have to follow up the rules and the regulations of the people that apply them. And I think all the agents should do the same and stay inside or go in your gallery the furthest or just in your backyard if you want to have a little fresh air so that we can have this whole situation over with as soon as possible. Samuels, who also rides at the Florida-based Gulfstream track, had returned there after claiming an unprecedented fifth Gold Cup victory back on March the 7th. However, he has returned home after realizing the severity of the spread of the virus across the world. I went back and I just decided to return home, which I foresighted this whole, um, this whole issue and this whole virus stuff as it was, I was watching it as it progressed and keep building because um, the, the, the world, they wouldn't, they wouldn't listen to what they're being told, they wouldn't follow the rules and the regulations so it can deteriorate faster, but that, and I'd, rather, I'd rather be home in these kind of situations as whereas this is where my family is and my siblings. And we head back over to the stu sports studio and say welcome back to Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, what do you have for us in the second half? Well, some more Olympic news. It's a blessing for many athletes. That's our veteran administrator and public relations officer of the Athletics Association of Barbados, Esther Maynard, views the extended qualification period for the Olympics. The International Olympic Committee has revised the qualification deadline for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics after the Games were postponed till next year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The new qualification period for the Games will now end on June 29, 2021. It puts it in, in perspective for them in that they know that they don't have to, je to jeopardize or try to fast track something that should take longer because it gives them a new time frame in which, as it were, to prepare and set the standards and get over any niggling injuries. There are two situations here. They have to honor the people who made the standard of was in the pool in that first period but haven't taken, taken away because of Kona or haven't lost because of COVID the opportunity to qualify and they are extending the games to next year, they would have to extend the qualification period because if not, you, if you took the original qualifying period but with a new date, it couldn't gel. So it does give those athletes who were on the rise the opportunity to, to make the games and it's just a, a payback kind of match and that's the way I look at it. Even with the extended time, Ms. Maynard says it's still too early to say how many athletes will meet the standard considering the ongoing threat of COVID-19. Until this, the corona settles down, we can't say what opportunities are going to be presented, but we know that we have a time frame now for those that have not made it up to now to compete. But it is very much dependent on, on corona the COVID-19, when we will be able to start resuming opportunities. And an athlete, as you know, goes in cycles, so they can just start bugging in to start to complete if they've had three or four months also. The whole period then gets put in relationship to the actual games next year. And then the athletes know now, well, look, I haven't made it up to this point, but once the COVID situation is over, I can then plot my preparation going towards the new qualifying extension. Most of the major sports in neighboring St. Vincent and the Grenadines could be affected for as much as a decade due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We get more in this report. Sports in St. Vincent and the Grenadines have been pushed back years, if not decades, due to an uncertain future brought about by the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. Playing fields, hard courts, and other venues of athletic pursuit have only the occasional dog or a bird alighting to rest its wings as occupants. Even the beaches are shunned by sportsmen and women. A social distancing is a self-enforced to curb its spread. One West Indies player told this reporter that he and his colleagues feel it's like nothing 
he has ever experienced before. He, like the others, are afraid to go out to train, for no one knows who is a carrier. Hundreds of sportsmen and women in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are anxiously awaiting the all clear from health authorities. All tournaments scheduled to be hosted have been either postponed or cancelled. Gyms now are as silent as a tomb, and many have said it will never be business as usual. The uncertainty that the virus may flare up again, triggering another crisis, is, as one national footballer put it, quote, it will be months before we will be comfortable being around each other. COVID-19 has changed life and sports for all of us. And quote Robertson Henry from sportcarai.com.